to the show, I can see how niggas are trying that. Real niggas make an excuse, so acknowledge that. I never turn bitch to the op, and I can promise that. Before a nigga come to my hip, that bitch on Bama Black. And you can talk a lot more to it. They demolish hey. my shooters that the beat play in. Okay. They on top of that, they like D-Wayne. See my nigga Mark. He ain't even got it. Hey. All you hear is... He put that Tommy back. Niggas better play it fair or quick. Hey. You already know, man. Music Monday. We back at it, man. Welcome to the show. Have a seat. Recline back. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I'm not much for, uh, for, for, for bullshitting around. I like to get straight to it. But before I get straight to it, you know, you know who I am, Angry Al, the Smart Alex Podcast. This is Music Mondays. Brought to you by Ill Idea Productions. I mean, we we out here, man. We doing it all, baby. So uh, make sure you check out Tuesdays. It's gonna be Tall Glass Tuesdays with my girl Queen. Uh, make sure you check out Wednesdays. I don't know what the name of that show gonna be just yet, but that's just gonna be focused on um, the male perspective on a lot of things. So uh, stay tuned to that. That's gonna be what we have. So of course, on Thursdays we still got the podcast coming. Smack you in the face with that. So, um, you know, I just appreciate you sticking around. Like I stated, welcome to the show, and, and, and let's get down to business. So, first things first. I think the hottest thing and the hottest topic that they're talking about right now is the whole um, Drake thing that uh, Tyler the Creator. And I actually seen, now I ain't going to say I seen the whole show, but I seen kind of like a, a longer post than the one that they was um that that was been circulating, and honestly, they were showing Drake love, man. I mean, at that one point in time, I guess it kind of got crazy because maybe they didn't want to hear that song at that time or something. I don't know, but from not just the one, the, not just the booing footage, but from footage where they weren't booing, it seemed as though individuals was having a good time. So why they started booing, I don't know. Maybe he felt. Maybe they felt that he was on some other shit at the time, and they wanted to hear Tyler. Maybe they was, maybe they was tired of listening, listening to Drake, and they just wanted to hear the headliner. So, I mean, you never know, but you can't, you know, everybody know Drake is a, uh, you know, is, is a great performer, and, you know, he's one of the top people on the radio. So, him being at your show is definitely, definitely a big deal. Um, and I know Tyler... Um, he felt some type of way about it because he tweeted about it and uh, he basically said like, damn, like, you know, I appreciate you stopping out. You know, he was kind of a little upset with his fans for, uh, you know what I'm saying, for being assholes, which, you know, you can't, you can't, you know, that's, that's, that's the fans. So you can't, um, you can't get mad at them for, you know, being upset that they're that you not on stage yet. I don't know how long Drake was performing, but at that time, obviously the, crowd wanted Tyler, so, you know, and that's what they were there for, and, I, and, I, and honestly, the way Tyler comes across, I don't even see, you know, Drake being, well, you know what, I think he did say, like, you know, he did that as a, um, as like just, you know, something, something big, you know, for his, um, for his, um, for his festival, and that is a big thing to have Drake stop through your festival and, 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 and you know, fuck with you, especially even they got a song together, um, so I appreciate every, I appreciate everybody stopping through and checking us out. Really do. I stick around like I said. We about to, I'm definitely about to get into some shit, get into some talking. So um. So anyways, yeah, like I said, the Drake born and Tyler created thing. You know, once again, Drake Drake fans and Tyler fans are probably opposite type of fans. So I can kind of understand why. You know, Tyler people are probably like, yo, we want to see you, nigga. We want this. Uh, we want that odd future shit. We want this. That Wolfgang shit. We don't want to hear this old commercial ass shit. Because that's basically what Drake is. He's just on commercial and pop shit. So, but salute to, uh, salute to that Tyler doing his thing. Uh, I think it's called the Vlog Festival or something like that. But, you know, it's a big thing. And I guess, you know, it was a big event. So, we got that out the way. That's that Drake shit. That, yeah. Now, let's get some more shit. Let's get some, some real quick. Uh, Trina. 
trainer. He tried to check her out. She was uh wilding, spazzing out on the bitch at um at Walmart. So um I guess the lady called her a nigga bitch. And this is this is really getting out of control, ladies and gentlemen. Like this is really like this whole calling people out their names. Like I think there was somebody else who was called a nigga. Yeah, it was some Popeyes employees. And um, the lady called them niggas, and the Popeye employee came outside and literally slammed the white old lady on the ground. So, I mean, now don't get me wrong, that was a little excessive. I mean, come on, dog. She was like a hundred. So, I felt like that was just kind of kind of excessive for that, you know what I mean? Because she was uh, she was an old lady. Hey, Queen, thank you. I appreciate that for you checking in. Checking my volumes. Is that is that volume better? It's scratch. Am I scratching now? Cause the show must go on. The show this this the show must go on. Scratch you or not? I will hope I'm not scratchy because I have people listening. But um, all right, thank you, thank you. So um yeah so. Once again, you know, Trina, she, you know, somebody called her a nigger bitch, which in my opinion, that's like, that's like one of the worst, like, come on, man. Like, you could just call her a bitch and you probably would have got away with it with not as much, um, you know, pushback than calling her a nigger bitch. Like, come on, man. We not, it's 2019. And honestly, you know, that shit is getting old and people are getting fed up. I mean, this country is on, is on the brink of explosion. So um doing things like that are not going to bring anything but um you know but an ass whooping more than likely um because don't nobody give a fuck no more before we was letting motherfuckers say nigga and slide now nah people is like uh-uh you ain't about to you ain't about to call me a nigga and think that that shit uh-uh nope it's worse than calling them a bitch that's why i said you could have called her a bitch and got away with it but calling her a nigga and a bitch at the oh no nah, you and I mean, I don't know, but I, I I heard the police got involved and some people got, you know, got um walked to their cars, things of that nature. But, um, you know, it's, it's crazy. And like I stated, somebody else called another guy a nigger and um, I forgot what state it was, but it was in a Popeye's and he literally followed the, the old lady outside and slammed her on the concrete very, very hard. So, um. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I definitely when they say those type of things, they definitely look for reactions and those and those, and they don't expect to get that. Well, I don't know if they expect to get that reaction, so they want to get us in trouble because a lot of times they already know. Oh, you say nigga if they do anything to me, then they're going to jail. So that's really why they see it because they got the law on their sides. But um, yeah, if somebody, you know, if it, if it get too crazy, <laughs> Queen Queen Wallace. If it gets too crazy out here, then yeah, people are going to be going to jail and dying because you know motherfuckers ain't ain't if motherfuckers is trying to stand for something nowadays. You know, before we was falling for anything, niggas ain't falling for anything no more. Niggas is standing for something. So, um, so like I said, you're gonna you're gonna definitely get a lot of pushback nowadays when you come, you know, with that racial shit. But anyways, let's get off of that. Um, so that's what Trina was going through. So I got another topic that since we're sticking with the ladies, let's stick with the ladies. I'm going to get right into Alicia Keys. Now, I love Alicia Keys. I'm a, And she doesn't have any new music out or nothing. I'm just, you know, we're just talking about what she's posted with her son. Now, like I said, I love Alicia Keys. Love her music, all that, all that stuff. Love her albums. But um, today, in my opinion, it was kind of like a, um, it was a opportunity that she passed up to really kind of teach her son, you know, some things. If you don't know what happened was um, Alicia Keys, I guess she went into the um, nail salon with her son and, you know, um, she was getting her nails done and her son was like, yo, I want to get my nails done too. And she was like, cool, that's fine. That's, that's, that's what's up. You know, get whatever color you want, go ahead, get your nails done. Now, I guess the, the young man's only four. So, you know, he's still impressionable. He's still soaking up things, but, um, after he got his nails done, from what she said, he said something to her like, yo, you know, people going to talk about me, you know, with, with my nails looking like this. And uh, she was like, yo, 
you know, that's fine. You expressing yourself. That's okay. Let them talk. That's, you know, that's you being you. It don't matter. You, you know, you can express yourself. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, yeah, <laughs> nigga four years old, like you're going to express yourself as much as I want you to express yourself. Like, bro, you can't, you're not going too far because I'm going to discipline you and you're a child and you got, you know, it, it's just, I don't know, man. When I hear this stuff, I think this is, this is rich people talk because they're rich and they feel as though, you know, they're in the type of environment, you know, they're in the music industry. So homosexuality and things of that nature and being, um, you know, kind of like on the feminine side or whatever, it's kind of what they, you know, kind of like what they're into because they're, well, I ain't gonna say that's what they're into, but we know the music industry is, 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 is pretty homosexual. So it's a lot of homosexuals in the music industry. So, you know, when it comes to musicians, I, I guess they probably look at it a little different when it comes to their children, you know, expressing themselves. Now, as a man, you know, in a in you know, and in a regular, you know, environment, not not rich and famous like these individuals, um, and I have a son as well. I don't think that that was, you know, I. I I think that was a time where she could have taught her son about being, you know, what the difference between a boy and a girl. Because, I mean, it's like people are acting like there's no longer a difference between a man and a woman. Like, there's a difference. And I think we've got away from raising our sons as kings. Like, when I think of my son, I think of him as a king. Like, you raising, you, we raising kings out here. So, I'm not going to raise my, 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 I'm not raising a king to be out here wearing nail polish and dresses and high heels and purses and shit like no nah, that's not what i'm that that's not how i was raised and i think that's really where it goes too because i think a lot of people maybe had bad upbringings you know their parents didn't you know felt as though their parents didn't treat them right or whatever the case may be so they're like i'm gonna i'm gonna raise my son totally different than the way my parents raised me and i mean that's if that's how you feel that's that's how you feel but i feel like my parents did a pretty good job i'm not gonna say they were perfect but i pretty much go by the model that my father gave me. I didn't see my father wearing fingernail polish. I didn't see my father going to the to the beauty salon. I didn't see my father wearing high heel. You know what I'm saying? I didn't see my father doing these things. So as a as a young man, as a boy, I didn't want to do those things. I wanted to do the things that my father was doing. You know what I mean? So you know, so you know, once again, I don't even know why he was, why he was at the nail salon with him. Where's your daddy at, nigga? Like, why aren't you at the basketball court? Nigga, so play video games like this is what you do, bro. Come on, man. Like, so I mean, once again, that's 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 how I was raised. And like I say, I'm not a millionaire, so my mentality towards children, my my child and my son and the way he's raised and and the way that he, the way that I have to teach him that he's a man and he has to be strong and he has to be a provider and he has to do these things. I don't have to. I'm not gonna teach him to be emotionless. I'm not gonna teach him to be heartless. There are a little. There are a few things that. You know, I am going to teach him about, you know, be, you know, maybe a little bit because I know I was taught to be hard. Like I know a lot of the niggas that I know, we was taught to be hard. We wasn't taught to show emotion and shit. We wasn't able to express ourselves. Nigga, what? Express yourself. You get smacked in the mouth. You better shut the fuck up and sit in the corner. You know what I mean? Like there was no expressing ourselves when we was young. But I didn't, you know, I was a kid. Like I understood like, yo, I'm a kid. I got to stay in a kid's place. Hey, hey, if I, my, if I'm, if my daddy say I can't do it, then I can't do it. But you know, regards, I, I, I don't want to stick on this too long because this is, this will go forever. But once again, I just think that she missed the teacher moment, and then for her to get out there and then put it out there and publicize it, like just let your kids be express themselves. And then, no, nah, no, nah, you, you keep that shit to yourself. You know what I mean? You let your, you keep that shit to yourself because that, you just fucked up like you just missed the moment that you could have taught your son like yo yes you can wear nail polish and express yourself if you want to but what men do men don't wear nail polish and if men do wear nail polish it's clear coat like a nigga go get his a manicure but he ain't getting no rainbow colors on his shit you're getting a clear coat that's it a clear coat that's it that's so that so yes son you can get your nails done but here get clear polish because that's what men get they get they get you know clear nails they don't get rainbow colors now if he would have got clear nails he wouldn't have had an issue he wouldn't have said nothing he would have been like oh they go talk about me he wouldn't have said nothing more than likely because why first off people don't even know you got the shit on <laughs> unless, unless they really look at your nails and be like damn nigga your nails shiny like oh yeah yeah 
nigga. I just can't. I just came from the motherfucking nail spot, get my hair. You know what I mean? But <laughs> other than that, don't nobody ain't no niggas checking for your nails. Only way we checking for your nails is if them bitches is bright and colorful. Then yes, we're gonna be like, nigga, why you got? Okay, bro. That's where you going with this, and that's and that's and that's how it is. So. I love Alicia Keys, though. I love her fucking music. I ain't gonna lie to you. I love. I was just thinking about her. I just think about her songs. But um, the OEA Awards, so the Ohio Entertainment Awards. Um, you know, I the awards were great. I appreciate being nominated. Um, you know, they nominated us. I was there. My crew wasn't there. wasn't there wasn't able to make it. But you know, we'll make it next year for sure. For sure, we got to be deep in there. But um. I was there and I had to wait the whole damn show. You know what I mean? Cuz I guess we were this the individual who was doing the the um the voting or you know the the announcing um we were like number 40 something. So we had to wait until 40 people were called before they got to our name and we didn't win. But once again, I appreciate you know being invited and, and going well not invited, but I just appreciate the nomination. But but that being said, because I was sitting, I was sitting with some people there who, you know, felt as though, like out of four people, I was out of the three people I was sitting with, all of us were nominated, but only one of us won, which was Uzi Susie. Shout out to Uzi Susie, she um won I think best female uh, rapper of the year or something. So shout out to her. But there was another young lady I was with named Honey. She was a host. She thought she was definitely going to win. And I was with my nigga 3D Kurt. Kurt, he didn't care if he won or not. He was just there. You know, he wanted to win. But, you know, at the same time, it was like, nigga, if I win, I win. I'm, if not, I was nominated. It's a blessing to be here. So that's um that's how that went. But while we were sitting up there and talking, because I really, like, once again, I'm just there, just watching, just being bored, drinking, talking shit, you know, blowing a little bit, whatever, just shooting the breeze. The one chick, Honey, though, she was pretty... Like she was on shit and she was saying things like, you know, this shit is a pop, like this is like a popularity contest. Like she knew basically everybody who was gonna win. Like, oh yeah, that nigga gonna win. Yeah, it's gonna be him. 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 No, lightweight only came to stand. Well, they had two um the format they had it at the little thing in um the old movie theater at Severance. And it was they had actually two sides. They had one side where they was doing everything live, and then they had another side where they, I guess, they were supposed to be trying to um, video everything so people could see, you know, so if they had enough room. But most of the people who was going to be on the other side, they just came and stood at the bottom. So everybody, so yeah, at one point in time, it was standing room. It was only standing room only for real. Like when it was first started, and people all got there before they start saying them, um, saying them names. You know, it was pretty standing room only. But you know, once again, once. Once the motherfucking names start getting called, people start leaving. Because the one, oh, all right, well, that's my shit. I'm gone. I didn't win. I'm gone. You know what I mean? That's how that was going. So, you know, but popularity. Like, it was, it, it from the way she was talking, it was a popularity contest. And then from what I've seen also, from, because, you know, not going to throw nobody under the bus. I ain't going to say no names. But the per, the person we lost to, ain't fucking with us at all like when i looked at her shit she had nothing she had maybe at the most 10 episodes we got over 100 episodes on our shit like we've been going for a minute and it's like her shit just started and when i say she only had 10 episodes i mean she really only had like six episodes subscribers i don't think she had as many subscribers as, as nothing so it kind of pissed me off when i seen who it was and i'm like how the fuck she beat us just off votes all right so this shit is strictly all votes like what i thought it was about what a motherfucker did what they what type of work they was putting in like don't get me don't get it twisted if i would have went to her shit and seen that her shit was blown up and she had you know thousands of followers and people really fuck with her oh then i would have been like oh yeah give it all oh, for sure she she got us but for me to go and see her shit and her shit is garbage for real like her shit was garbage yo like i and that's why i said i ain't throwing i ain't gonna say no names but when I went to her shit to look at it, I'm like, man, what the fuck? Like, she beat us, and then, I, and then on top of that, when she uh was done, she was like, I, I, I got most of my vote. My votes didn't even come from Cleveland. So what the fuck? So where? So what? So I, you know, it, you know, it was just um, 
it was it was it was a great you know thing that they put together you know like i say it was pretty disappointing that we lost to somebody who that can't touch us but um you know it is what it is you know next time i will hope that um motherfuckers do research like don't just put a bunch of names on a list bro like do research like because if you do the research then first off you ain't gonna have 50 motherfucking um 50 things you'll have you know that shit will be down to a certain amount because you know exactly what all right nigga this is this is what we need to be voting on this is what matters this is what people want to know about you know what i mean because motherfuckers were saying the same shit over again like Philly Whedon won something. I think, like, best businessman or some shit. It's like, Philly Whedon, like, come on, man. Philly Whedon been out here for how fucking long, bro? He shouldn't be winning anything at these award shows anymore. He's above these fucking award shows, bro. If anything, you should be giving him some honorary shit. It's because he a nigga from Cleveland who didn't blew up, but he didn't know. Man, he didn't got all the fucking awards. Ray Jr., y'all giving him, y'all still giving this nigga awards. Like, what the fuck, bro? These, no, no, there's no way these guys should have been winning when you got real niggas out here who really was putting in work, who ain't had no help. You know what I'm saying? Who wrote their own scripts, who produced their own movies, shot their own shit. You know what I'm saying? But you want to give it to these niggas who ain't even here. Shit, Ray Jr. is not here. He wasn't even, he's not here. Niggas knew he wasn't going to be there. What the fuck? Like, shit, and he got, and Ray Jr. got like three fucking awards. He got all the movie awards, basically. I think he got best producer, best screenwriter, best movie. It's like, God damn, bro. It's a lot of niggas out here really doing it. Like, there's no way you... that Ray Jr. has been out here for I don't know how long. You know what I'm saying? I'm quite sure he's been in more than that movie. Like, and he wasn't... And the nigga who wrote it and all that shit, that was, these was all different niggas. It's niggas out here who actually wrote and shot their own shit. Shout out to... Shout out to... uh, what, uh um Johnny, I think his name is uh Johnny Lumpkin. That nigga, uh, Life Lessons. That nigga wrote and shot his own shit, bro. I don't know too many niggas out here doing that. You know what I'm saying? Ray Jr., whoever the fuck, man. Fuck that shit. So, yeah, I was a little disappointed in that shit. Like I said, I appreciate them inviting us out and everything. Andrew Lloyd doing his thing. He always got a award show going, and he always trying to show Cleveland love, and I respect that, but you got to really start showing, you know, once niggas then blew up, leave them niggas alone. Let them niggas go. Them niggas don't need us. No, I'm, I'm not saying they don't need us, but they don't need to be taking up awards that you could be giving it to other niggas and helping they shit. You know what I'm saying? Because once again, niggas, I seen somebody post something about the award show and I don't know. I think he's beefing with somebody from the award show and I'm not going to put their names out there either. But when it comes to these award shows, don't get it twisted. It's, 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 it's not, it's nothing, but it is something. All right. Because an individual can take this shit and be like, yeah, Nigga, I didn't want an award for this, and I didn't want the Cleveland Award for that. whoop de whoop whoop de whoop But these are for individuals who are just coming up, just getting started, who need that motherfucking, who need that little little notch on their resume. Like who who could who could use that notch on their resume to get a little bit further? Where you giving props to niggas who resume is already them niggas is gone. Them niggas is doing their thing. They ain't giving a fuck about this shit. You need to be giving the notches to niggas who who's here and really like trying to make it and trying to do something don't be giving the shit to niggas who are already done who didn't like i said you've given out fucking shit to niggas who ain't even there who, who don't give a fuck i ain't gonna lie to you i'm not saying that they don't literally don't give a fuck but i'm just saying they got bigger and better things on their plate right now the ohio entertainment awards that shit should be for lightweight you know local niggas local niggas who've been doing shit for the past year not niggas who've been doing shit for two three four years who didn't want the shit two three nah that's that's not cool that's not that's not how that shit should be so that's that's my whole whole um give back on that it's just that um you know it was it's a popularity contest so with that being said i'm gonna get to my main event on Music Monday, which is underground versus mainstream, which at this point in time, I'm going to put unpopular versus popular. Do you think you still have to be popular in your city to be successful, to blow up? Now, if y'all listening, you can chime in and I will definitely answer your shit. Nope. Yeah, to you, yeah of course not. No, you don't. Not at all. You don't need to be. Um, that I agree with T. Anybody else? No. 
she says the strangers love you the best. And um I agree. And and and, and I'm, unfortunately I'm going to say it's really just where we're at though. I'm telling you cuz it's just cuz business is business and business is broke down into markets. And certain markets are good for certain things. Our market is good for making sh like following shit, like making shit hot, hotter than what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like when shit get to bubbling, like shit, shit pop in the A. Like a lot of shit come out the South, unfortunately. There's a few things come out, come out New York, but most of this shit is coming out the A. All right. So when that shit come out the A, that shit already, there's so many fucking independent and black owned radio stations in Atlanta that a lot of these niggas is already getting money and getting paid in Atlanta. But once again, Atlanta is, is, is a black, is the black Mecca. So in Atlanta, you have a lot more hospitality. You have a lot more individuals who are going to support you just off the strength of one thing, the color of your motherfucking skin up here. It's just not like that. We're not going to, I'm not going to support you just off the color of your skin. It's kind of like how Kanye talks, how he feels like, Oh nigga, I'm not just going to make decisions off the color of my skin, bro. A lot of decisions that you've made, the reason that you haven't gotten to where you want to be is because of the color of your skin. So you could sit there and think that the color of your skin doesn't make it make or break anything, but it does, nigga. That's why it's so hard for you to get to where you at. Motherfucking Kanye, if you was white, you'd be a multi-billionaire right now. You'd be with Louis Vuitton. That nigga would be all over the place, but you black, my nigga. So it, it, you only going to go but so far. You got a white girl so she can help you. You know, you got a little leg up because you got somebody on the other side, but at the same time, nigga, you still black and you still only going to go so far. So that, you know, with that being said, it's like, it's a popular thing. You know what I'm saying? It's not, I mean, it's not a popular thing when it comes to your city. You know what I mean? Not in Cleveland. In Atlanta, maybe, maybe a little bit more because in Atlanta, it's a more kicking it, more outgoing city. It's something always going on there. So you have an opportunity to always be out doing something in Ohio up North. I mean, unless you in New York, it's not like that. It's not like that in Tennessee. It's not like that in Chicago. It's not like that in a, in Detroit. A lot of that shit is just, it's just, we don't have those. We don't party like that. We don't have that type of support up here. We're not as segregated either so it's so much integration that motherfuckers rub off on other motherfuckers like you got a lot of uncle toms up here you know what i'm saying a lot of fake ass niggas up here a lot of black boys black dudes who want to be white black girls who want to be white got a lot of that dumb shit up here you know what i'm saying they think that shit cool they think that shit that shit gonna help them in the long run but once again the bottom line is nigga when the revolution come you black <laughs> flat fuck out so um, so in my opinion, no, you definitely don't have to be popular in your city, um, to make it nowadays. And I think Russ said the same thing, like, you know, popularity is really nothing anymore when it comes to your city. Nigga, it's about your business. It's about your business strategy. And it's about, you know, having the right people in your corner, having a strong team and executing and making shit happen because nigga, everything else is, is the, the world is so wide open. Like, there's so many opportunities for so many different things. Nigga, you can make an app right now. You can go online and go to how to, you know, make an app. And there's app makers out there that you can just pay for. Motherfucker, you'll have an app out in the next 24 hours. And you can make your own movies. Like, I seen some shit. I'm giving y'all some motherfucking game right here. So, better listen. You can take this shit and do what you want to do with it. But, um, come to find out, Amazon... So Amazon Prime, you know, they sell they sell movies and TV shows and shit, you know, like a Netflix somewhat, somewhat. Yeah, I think it's somewhat like that. But you can buy this shit, too. Like Netflix, you ain't buying no movies. But Amazon Prime, you can rent this shit, watch it, or you can actually buy the shit. So um, young lady, I think, no, it was the young lady who, because uh, once again, the Ray Jr. won so many times for this movie that, you know, different people were coming up and, you know, saying different things. But I and I think um, another young lady uh, was it for I, I don't want to say it was for Ray Jr. movie. This might have been for a different movie. I don't remember. But I I think it might have been for a different movie. But regardless, um, when the young lady kept coming up there, she kept saying, like, you know, make sure you go get it on Amazon Prime. Make sure you go get it on Amazon Prime. Make sure you go get it on Amazon Prime. 
So I'm like, yo, fuck the fuck Amazon Prime. How the fuck you get your music? How how you get that shit on Amazon Prime? So I just looked that shit up. So um, and it looks like you know if you write if you write a movie if you got a movie you can put that shit on Amazon Prime. <laughs> that's what it. That's what I think right now. Like that's what all arrows point to Amazon Prime. If you want to do some independent movie, so you can go out there shoot a movie for a half an hour, call it a, a short film or whatever. Put that shit on Amazon Prime and sell it. So. I just gave you some game. If you didn't know, Amazon Prime is taking submissions. And I think, you know, you probably got to pay a little fee, you know what I mean, for distribution, because that's basically what they're doing for you. They're, distrib- they're distributing your um, your movie for you. So you'll probably pay a monthly fee for distribution. But um, other than that, I'm quite sure your shit will be, you know, everywhere it needs to be. Well, it, it'll probably be on Amazon Prime. It won't make it to Netflix. See, the, the only thing about the whole Amazon Prime thing is I believe that you can put up whatever you want which is cool, you know what I mean? But we all know that when it comes to movies and stuff, I mean, you can have a good script, but you definitely got to have quality. Now, to get your shit on, like, Netflix, things of that nature, you have to shoot it in a certain quality. Now, for Amazon, I don't think you have to, and that's why I said that's the that could be the lick for somebody who got a movie and trying to, you know, push it and get it out there and make a couple of dollars off of it is Amazon Prime because you won't be able to get it on Netflix or Hulu because they have um stipulations like you got to have certain you know your shit got to be official you got to be them spend some bands on that shit for it to go on hulu or for it to go on um, netflix but if you want it on amazon prime i think it's like i said i think it's a monthly fee i don't know what the monthly fee is because i haven't looked into it yet but um i will be looking to it soon so with that being said i think that's everything man i think that's everything for the night it's nine o'clock I think that's a good ending, good way to start it and end and do it, even at nine o'clock. So, yeah. So, um, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate everybody who came in. Queen, thank you for being here. You're always here. Um, can't wait for your um, your session tomorrow. I don't know what you're going to be talking about, but I can't wait to hear about it. Um, make sure you. You know, make sure you go to our website, man, www.thesmartalex.com. You can go there. You can subscribe to our website right there. Just go to the website. The website has everything there. We, our pod bean is there. Our videos are there. Our bio is there. If you want to know about, you know, all the Smart Alex, our merchandise is there. We got T-shirts. Uh, I think I'm going to get some little wristbands in a minute, too. So I think I'm going to send out free wristbands with all the T-shirts. But um. So, yeah, I mean, check out the website. Of course, you go to YouTube, you know, subscribe. Make, when you go to YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Don't just go and watch. You just make sure you click the little red button to the right. Subscribe for us. Get those up. And um, you know what our Instagram is, the Smart Alex Podcast. Make sure you go there. Follow us. Tell your friends to follow us. And um, you know what it is, Music Mondays. I'm out. Before I go, you know what I'm going to do. I got to... I gotta find some some good music. Well, you know what? I don't think we gonna. Ah oh, man, I got some music, y'all. Really divided that every time they vote, uh, the race is so close they have to go back and count the votes all over again. And that, that, which means that any block, any we gonna get this audio together. I know it don't sound that good, but we gonna get it together. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who will go to the White House and who will stay in the doghouse. This world is my battlefield, and I'm fighting to stay alive. No justice, no peace, no trust for police, no system to make it right. This world is my battlefield. And I'm fighting to stay alive. No justice, no peace, no trust for police, no system to make it right. America, 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 to land a home of the liberty. Talk that's a way, but somehow today, freedom makes something to get to me. Everything's starting to look clear to me. They want a monster, they don't want to see us conquer and capture the moment we after. They want us in shackles, no shooting in battle. This shit doesn't matter.